in a series uh, called Spiritual Warfare, and like it or not, you're in a battle. You may not realize it, but you ever feel like there's something more going on beyond what I'm seeing? And, and sometimes what happens with us, if, you, if people say, well, I gave my life to Jesus, and everything got worse. Uh, in, in 2024, I decided to read my Bible more. I decided to give and tithe. I lost my job. Uh, my dog got hit by a car. My cat's still alive, <laughs> which I'm happy about. But everything's going worse, right? Everything is getting worse. What is going on here? I, I thought God's supposed to make my life better. I thought God's supposed to make my dreams come true. True who? Who who, right? My, my dreams are supposed to get better. God's supposed to make things better. God, you're here to make me happy. And things are getting worse. Guys, Jesus never said, give me your life. And I'm going to give you such an abundance. You're going to buy a new car, a new house. You're going to get rid of your louse. It's going to be amazing. You're going to have a new spouse. He didn't say all that. Jesus said, in this world, you will have... Let me hear it. You're going to have trouble in this world. You're going to have trouble. But rejoice, for I have overcome the world. And so, listen, everybody. We're going to have a battle. And listen, the enemy doesn't fight against people that are doing nothing. But when you and I say, I'm going to step forward, I'm going to make a difference in my workplace. I'm going to fight for my marriage. And then you blow it when you go home. You act worse than you ever had before when you had a bunch of guys pray for you to help your marriage. And you blow it worse. Because the enemy understands that. He understands that, and so he tries to discourage us. But it's at these times, we need to battle up everybody. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're in a spiritual battle, and there's an enemy out there that wants to destroy you. It's obvious if you can see what's going on in society. People have said, there's a conspiracy theory. Yeah, it is. It's called the demonic realm. Mankind is not that smart. But it all, it's all this clandestine. No, it's not clandestine. It's called the enemy. He's working, okay? And so... We're in a spiritual warfare. We have to learn how to fight. And the good news is God is stronger than the enemy. Please understand that he's a defeated foe, everybody. Okay? And there's two opposite errors we do. Either we think, oh, my God, the enemy's coming after me. Oh, the de- how are you doing? Oh, the de- devil's after me. The devil's after me. How are you doing? The devil. I don't want to hear about the devil. I'm asking you, how are you doing? Or other people say, ah, it doesn't matter. No. There's an enemy out there. God is stronger. We have victory through Jesus Christ. But we are in a battle. And if we're not aware of that, we're going to be fighting the wrong battle. You know, your battle is not your wife, not your kids, or your teacher. Your battle is not your parents. Your battle is not the government. No, there's something behind it. When you understand that, you look at people differently. You understand that the battle is behind what you're seeing. There are things going on that you're not even aware of. And so when you understand that, you can pray and ask God to work powerfully. And then when you're seeing a situation, you can pray intelligently What's going to happen? So today we're going to continue to talk about spiritual warfare. And I wanted to help you guys and encourage you all. to. This is what the Word of God says. The Apostle Paul is writing this while he's in prison. Now, the Apostle Paul could think this. Here I am, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, I'm supposed to go to Rome. And where am I? In prison. Thanks a lot, God. I'm in prison. I can't visit. I can't do meetings. I'm by myself. They want to let certain people come in there. I'm chained to a Roman guard. This stinks, Lord. Where are you, Jesus? I, I thought you're supposed to make my dreams come true. Who, 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 who? It ain't happening. But what happened? In his darkest time, God took what the enemy meant for evil. And we're reading something called the prison epistles. If the apostle Paul was out preaching, he would never have time to pen what we're reading today by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This is scripture. This is God's word. And it's because of the dark season of his life that God turned it for something good. So I want to encourage you, whatever you're going through, this dark seasons, look for God in it. The Bible says he causes all things to work together for good for those who love God. He doesn't say he causes bad things to happen. But God can take your tragedy and turn it into a triumph. God can take your trash and make it a treasure. But we have to be willing to give it up. And so as a result of that, I'm like, God, I want to learn wherever I'm found. I want to get better at it, Lord. I want to know you more. And one of the things I'm, I'm leaning into in this time, and I don't want it to all be about me, but I just want to be transparent with you because I just, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'd rather just be real. Is that okay? I you know, I'll come up, oh, praise God. No, I'll just be honest. It's been tough. It's been tough. But you know what's amazing? I, um, 
you know, when my mother passed, I, I, I wanted to see her body. And like, no, 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 no. No, I want to see her body. I want to see her body. And I saw her body. And I could just tell she's not there anymore. I go to her house and I see her jewelry. I see pictures and it's like empty. It's empty. She's not there, right? The clothes don't mean anything. The, the, even the body. And, and so, and, and it, the Lord just reminding me, saying, see how this means nothing? The most important thing is me and people, right? That's where your treasure is. You gather all these things, it means zero. Some archeologist would put, might put it in the museum one day if you're lucky. But really it matters to everybody is loving Jesus, loving your family, and loving the people God surrounds you with and helping people come to know Christ. <laughs> right? And that's why we can never stop growing because God wants to reach more people. And we wanna be a people, place where people can hear more about God. So finally, be strong in the Lord, not in yourself, but in the Lord, and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. There's a police officer out there. He has got a uniform, or he or she, I'm not quite sure who's there today. Uh, not because it's the 2000s and 20s, it's because, well, I didn't, never mind. <laughs> Finally, be strong in the Lord. It was bad. In the strength of his might, put on the what? Whole armor of God. So they're, they're out there, the police officer's out there, and the reason they can go in the middle of the street because they got the uniform on, they got power, right? They're strong in the fact that I'm a police officer and I can stop traffic. Don't, they're, not, they're not walking around. They don't come out there with street clothes when they go out there and show people, Bow, boom, right? We have pancakes for, uh, for, for first service. No, that's not what's happening. What's happening is they're coming in the strength of the might that they're a police officer. They can stop traffic. Put on the whole armor of God that you, and the, put it all on. It's a command that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the enemy. There is an enemy out there in the schemes. For we do not wrestle against your mother-in-law. No, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. You do not wrestle against your parents. You do not wrestle against your teachers. You do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Rulers, against authorities, against cosmic powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces and evil in the heavenly places. We're not just battling people. We're not just battling governments. We're not battling political parties or ideologies. We're battling, battling spiritual principalities in high places. When you understand that and you begin to win in the battle of heaven, therefore, take up what? The whole armor. Put it all on, not just part of it. Armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand firm, stand, right? Sometimes the best thing you can do is I'm, I'm gonna continue to stand. I don't know what God is doing, but I'm gonna stand. Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and the shoes for your feet and having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace and all circumstances take up the shield of faith. That's here today. Shield of faith, which you can extinguish. What does it say? All, all not some, all the flaming darts of the evil one and take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplications to that end. Keep alert with perseverance, right? Making supplication for what? All the saints, that's right. You are called to look out for each other. We're called to be an army together. God does not call us to be individuals only. He calls us to be soldiers in an army and that God has placed us in, that we make, a, we make a difference together. So we are in a spiritual battle. We talked about that. So let's go ahead and break down today. Today we're talking about the different armaments. Let me just go through it briefly. The apostle Paul is using this as an analogy to teach spiritual principles. In fact, I'm amazed. The Bible says all creation declares the glory of God. You can, look, you can look outside your window and see a bird in a tree, and God will speak to you through the bird. I'm not saying that God's speaking through a bird, but looking at nature, because God's truth is baked in creation. God's truth can be seen in the sky. That's why we're without excuse. There is logic, there's reason behind everything. And so you can see, even in a Roman armament, there's truth baked into it. You can't run away from God no matter what you do. So we talked about this in the Roman armament and we'll go through to each piece. The first one we talked about was the belt of truth. Belt of truth is the most important process of the armament. It's, truth is not subjective. I mean, truth, yeah, truth is, is not subjective, it's objective. There is truth, there is absolute truth. We know it in mathematics, I think, right? Remember we said, 
Two plus two equals six, right? We all know that, right? The latest poll says two plus two equals six. In fact, the Supreme Court just made it, just, just passed a law that two plus two equals six. And if you don't do that, you're going to be put in prison. Uh, uh, guys, how much is two plus two? You guys are so smart. <laughs> right? So there's truth, everybody. Right? He's the way, the truth. And so the belt of truth holds it all together. And, and in the belt of truth, it holds it together. It keeps everything centered, including the breastplate of righteousness. It all connects to truth. Without truth, it doesn't work, everybody. You must believe there's absolute truth, absolutely. Well, I'm the truth. You don't have your truth, and I have my truth. You have your opinion, I have my opinion. There is truth, and that name is Jesus. I am the way, I am the what? Truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's so narrow-minded. That's right. Narrow is the road that leads to salvation. Broad is the one that leads to destruction. Well, I don't like that. Well, I don't make the rules up. I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. And I say it not in a judgmental compassion, a way, but how many folks know, uh, guess what's coming pretty soon? April what? Tax man, right? Yeah, ta or tax person. Uh, try to tell them, well... I didn't feel like paying taxes this year because I don't think taxes are just. What's going to happen to you? Okay, yeah, death and taxes, okay. Not Texas, taxes. Just don't go to Texas. Stay here in Connecticut. We need you. And by the way, the prices are rising everywhere in the country, so you need to stay here. All right, there's the belt of truth. Then we talked about the, um, we talked about the breastfed of righteousness and how it fits upon you and protects your internal organ that you're making right decisions. You can go back under series and hear about it. Uh, shoes of peace, all right? And then today, and, and the cleats and how you need to stand with the shoes of peace and you have to stand strong and walk on the enemy. And then today we're talking about the shield of faith. And so I went on the internet, as some of you call the internets, and I wanted to buy a shield. And they're like really expensive, like $1,000. So I found a shield, looked really, really good online. And this is what they sent me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this couldn't stop a baby. But anyhow, it looks pretty good on camera, though, doesn't it? It looks like the real deal. Yeah, yeah. So this is the nothing but you know, whatever. So this is the shield of faith. <laughs> Some of you feel like this today. And by the way, don't trust what you have online, even when you're dating. Just want to get just, a little, just let you know. Just let you know. It looks different in person. Okay. Just a little bit of advice, okay? Is that okay? Give you a little advice? Okay. So anyhow, here you have a shield of faith, and this actually kind of represents what it looks like. It was square. It was, it was curved like this, and it, it was like plywood, different types of wood. They would go against, they would put the grains differently. They, they would glue it together. They'd put metal on it, right? And then they'd wrap it in leather, and then they would dip it in water so when the fire darts came, it would extinguish them. Not only that, we're going to talk more about it, but they would, it'd actually be about four feet high, about two feet wide, or three feet wide, and you could hide behind, I know you can't hide behind this, right? Okay, you hide behind the shield, and, and, and there's different types of shields. One shield is for personal battle, but the one the Apostle Paul's talking about is the one, I'm not going to do the Roman word, it's the one that's big, it's, you use it in cooperation with others, so the shield of faith is not just your faith, it's the faith with others locking together. That together we could be a wall and we could bulldoze the, the, what the enemy is doing here in New England. We can bulldoze what's happening in this culture and make a difference, not by being a political jerks, but by being spiritual men and women that make a difference and we go after the core of what's really going on. And you and I are supposed to be interlocked together. And hence, that's why we have small groups. And today is small group sign up. And that's part of the reason. In fact, if you don't have a small group, we'll make one for you. Can I make a suggestion? Uh, one of the greatest groups we do here, I think, that every Christian should go through is something called freedom. It's tonight, I believe, at 6.30 or 6. It's right here at the church. If you don't have a small group, sign up for that one. You learn how to deal with the truth, and truth will set you free. So this represents a, a, a shield, and the shield protects you, and you can hide behind it, right? You, it's your wall. It's like a doorway, and this is what we're talking about. So as you can see, it also is like a battering ram in the middle of it. And they've done some archaeological digs, and they found, uh, this is actually a preserved one, very ornate, very beautiful, but they would also put leather on it and put artwork on it. This one was more decorative than some of them would be. But the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 16, in all circumstance, what? Take up the what? Shield of faith. 
every other thing we have to put on all the time. But he says, take up as necessary. Now, if I go out to eat with you and I go like this, how you doing? Mike, how you doing? No, I'm not going to always have this up, right? Come home. Hey, honey, I'm home. Actually, that's pretty smart sometimes. <laughs> May not be a bad idea. We do have this in the gift shop, which we, we don't even have a gift shop. But maybe you walk around. <laughs> maybe we should. But you walk around with this little shield, right? You know, you don't do that. You put it as necessary. But when you're going through, hey, guys, I need you to stay with me in prayer and get other people ca- gather together, which we're going to show you in a little bit what that looks like. Take, on, take up the shield of faith in which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the enemy. You do not have to give in to the enemy. You may feel like it. You may feel you're down. But Christ is stronger than the enemy if you give your life to Jesus Christ. See, the shield is the first line of protection against the attacks of the enemy. Faith. And the good news is, this is not a behavior modification. We're not asking you, as we heard last week from my friend Dave, we're not asking you to do behavior. We're asking you to take what God's told you to do and put it into practice. We're asking you to believe in the word of God and create, it creates faith. Faith is something God gives you. It says in Peter, God has given us everything we need. God has given us a bank account of everything we need, but we access it by faith and by faith doing it. Now, it's not works that makes it. God gives us the grace to do it. And he gives us grace only when we do it. Let me give you an example. When Peter was on the boat and he saw Jesus walking on the water, uh, Peter said, Lord, command me to come. And Jesus said, come. What did, what, did, what did he walk on? He didn't walk on the water. He walked on the word. He believed the word and he stepped out. Often it's not until you step out that you find that God is there. And you have to trust his word. So the shield's a first line of protection. Listen, I don't know. I, I've told my mother this, and I, I, you hear me say it a thousand times. I don't want to bring up my mom the whole time, but I bring, this is one of my state statements I almost say every week is the best days are always ahead for those in Christ Jesus. Because the best, we don't live for here, we live for eternity. And when you know that truth, no matter how bad it gets, the best is still yet to come. It may not happen on this side of heaven, but the best is yet to come. We are eternal beings. I can take it. I can take it. God will never leave me or forsake me. Even until the end, the Bible says, God, you said you'd never leave me or forsake me. So I'm standing. My emotions are screaming at me. But God, I'm going to believe what I know to be true over my thoughts and my feelings because your word will not pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. Kingdoms rise, kingdoms fall. Families go, families come. But your word stands forever. I'm going to stand on that truth. Even I don't feel it. So what does that mean about faith? We're going to look at it right now. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. What is that supposed to mean? It means you believe something and you act on it. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. And hope doesn't mean like, I hope it doesn't rain tomorrow. Hope is future fact not yet realized. Hoped for, it's the conviction of things not seen. I believe, even though I don't see it. Now, faith, actually, the Greek word is pistis. How many of you ever get pissed? Pistis. <laughs> okay? From now on, I want to change your vocabulary. I don't want to hear you say anymore, I'm, I, 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 I'm you know what I'm going to say. You say, I'm pistis. Hey, watch your line. No, no, I'm telling you, get pistis. You and I need to get pistis which means faith. So when next time you look at your neighbor and say, I'm pistis. Where's your pistis? Okay, you're like, pastor, you're out of control. Can we have fun in church? Okay. Pistis means faith, right? It's over 240 times in the New Testament. It's acting on the truth. I have pistis and faith. It's pistis and the Holy Spirit. No pistis and vinegar. Pistis in the Holy Spirit, right? I'm going to believe. It's walking, it's acting out what you know to be true. Not just understanding it, but actually doing it. Forgiving someone when they've offended you. Lord, I forgive this person. I give them over to you. That's what faith is. Faith is not feelings. It's not feelings. It is not. Well, I feel the faith in the room. Now, that's fine. You may be able to sense through your five senses that there's faith in the room and I believe something. But we all put too much emphasis on feelings. Feelings are wonderful servants but lousy masters. 
If you live by your feelings, look out. You're gonna have the most unstable relationships known to man. You're gonna be quitting your job, getting new jobs. You'll be leaving relationships, getting new relationships. You're gonna be moving all around the country constantly because you're not happy. I'm not happy, I'm not happy. I wanna be happy. I gotta be happy. I'm not happy. You know what? Happiness is a state of mind. We don't live by feelings, although they're important to recognize. God gives us feelings for a reason. You see, faith is like the locomotion. Faith is like the train that pulls the rest of it, the caboose is feelings. We gotta live by facts, not feelings. Faith, not feelings. For if we walk by faith, not by sight. I'm gonna believe God even though I don't know what's going on. God, I thank you that I believe even though I don't know what's going on. There was a time in my life where I prayed, I got nothing out of it. I read the Bible, I got nothing out of it. I thought God changed his address. I thought God wasn't even around for a period of time because I, I, I got nothing out of it because for the longest time in my life, for most of my adolescence, I used to believe because I felt it. And there came a point in time where God kind of took away the feelings of it. And I had to learn to walk by faith, not by feelings. And it, it was a painful lesson to learn, but a very important lesson to learn. We must live by faith, not feelings. Feelings are indicators. We do. We should ask ourselves the question, are my feelings aligning with truth? If your feelings are not aligning with truth, your feelings are a lie. I've told people that go through panic attacks, you know, by the way, it happens a lot. Big problem in our culture today, a lot of anxiety. I said, when you go through that, just tell yourself, it's going to be okay. God's got this. You know, white knuckle it. You're on a roller coaster ride. God's got you. Just let it, eh, it's just emotion. I got this. God, I got this. Thank you, God, you're with me. And it's like, thank you, God, you're with me. And just hold on. When you're depressed, hold on. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. Feelings. God's word is stronger than feeling. And don't beat yourself up if you're struggling with emotional issues. Jesus understands all of this. If we walk by faith, not by sight or feelings, any faith that must be supported by evidence of the senses is not real faith. As A.W. Tozer said, that's so good. I wish I came up with that. I did. Any faith that must be supported by the evidence of the senses is not real faith. You know, faith becomes sight when we die one day and we get to see Jesus face to face. That's exciting. Feelings are circumstantial. I don't live on happiness. I live on, I live on, what do I live on? Not feelings. Faith, yes, but even more than that. I live by joy. Joy is a choice. And so that's why in the middle of difficulties, you can be mourning, but have joy. The joy of my salvation, I know God is with me. Faith is a choice. It's a choice that you and I have to do. We choose to live. I choose, one of the greatest ways of choice. And I, I, I was reading uh, a couple of weeks ago, some gentleman in England one time said, I could probably empty out the psych ward if I could get people to forgive themselves. Forgiveness is one of the biggest things that the enemy uses. If you can say, I forgive myself and I forgive others, Lord, I give them to you. Things can really change significantly. Faith must be received. You don't produce it, you receive it. How do you receive it? Well, I'm so glad you asked, okay? So faith comes by what? Hearing, hearing and hearing by the, the, the word of Christ. So we hear the word, we get the word in us. That's why every day you gotta get in the word, get in the word, always hear the word. Well, what does that mean, get in the word? Well, I, I don't know, how, I, I read the Bible and it talks about some dude and some like goat's milk and don't boil the mother. I mean, what does that have to do with me? Okay, well, yeah, can I just tell you something, a little side note? Start with the New Testament. All that means something. Even this morning I was reading about sacrifices and I learned something from it. But the word of God is so powerful and so true. Get a little bit in you. We'll talk about it in a few moments what that means. When, when I listen to trash, I deposit doubt. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. My arm hurts. My arm hurts. My arm hurts. My arm, ow, that hurts. Why? I keep looking at it, keep punching it. My arm's getting better in Jesus' name. You will drive towards, your whole body will drive towards what you believe, whether you believe it or not. When I listen to trash, I deposit doubt. You have an account. You have a doubt account and faith account. 
Now, the best thing you can do is not try, is, is to starve the doubt. Don't try to get rid of it. It doesn't work too well. Replace it with faith. It's you, you want to overflow it with faith. So I remember a number of years ago, I'm a guitar player, and I used to listen to Van Halen, a great guitar player. Uh, and there was a song by the best of both worlds. And the, the, the lyrics was, you don't have to, Sammy, Sammy Hagar said, you don't have to die and go to heaven or hang around and be born again. Just tune into what this world's got to offer because we'll never be here again. I want the best of both worlds. Good song. Anyhow, so anyhow, I heard that and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit said, why are you listening to that trash? It's, it's, def, it's defeating everything you believe. I picked up the record. You know what a record is? It's like a vinyl thing. <laughs> kind of like this. It's got a little hole in it. I took it and went, I broke it. I said, you know, I'm getting rid of my, all my AC, DC. You know, I was also talking, you know, singing about going to bed with girls and all that. I, I don't need to listen to that. So I started filling myself with Petra and other, other bands out there and other music because I wanted to fill myself with truth, not lies. I'm telling you, if you're watching Netflix and every other second they're F of this, F that, and they're not saying faith, and they're jumping in bed with everyone that moves, that's going to affect you. That's going to affect you guys. I, listen, you do what you want, but you fill yourself up with trash, you're going to start living trash. You see, when I listen to truth, I deposit faith. So what you want to do is get more faith. And the more faith you have, what happens is the faith will flood away the doubt. So don't try to stop. I got to get rid of this trash. I got to get rid of this trash. I got to get rid of this. No, don't worry about that. Just get, get yourself full of God's truth. Stay in his truth. Stay in his truth. It's going to flush it out. If you focus on the, on, the, on the lies, you'll have more lies. Focus on God's truth and watch what will happen. So this is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but I will accomplish what I desire and achieve a purpose which I sent it. God's word is powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Faith must be received and faith must grow. Now I'm gonna illustrate something to you. I hope you don't mind. You have to exercise your faith. Okay, you have to exercise your faith. So as also faith by itself, if it does not have works, it's dead. Okay, so I know I have to have faith. So faith is a muscle that either de declines or develops. Now, I hope you don't mind me doing this, but if you try to do push-ups, I was talking to my son the other day and show me how he does push-ups and, and not Luke, the younger one. And he said, well, dad, I th the push-ups are like this, right? You, you get in your knees and you go like this. And he goes... So no, that's not a push-up. That's a late. Oh, I didn't say ladies. Ladies are strong. Okay. So anyhow, so um, so I said no, no, that's not how you do it. You go like this. You, you straighten out, put your head up, and you go like this, right? Whoo, <laughs> whoo. Okay. But seriously, you know, I, I can't really do that. But if you keep on doing it every day. <sighs> you keep doing it every day. You keep doing push-ups, right? You keep doing it, and you get stronger, and you develop muscles. You're not going to see the muscles overnight, but you keep doing a push-up one day. Do no push-up. Like, the hardest one now for me to do is pull-ups. That's hard. But eventually, I want to get weights on me so I can do it. But anyhow, so that's, what you got. that's why I'm so built. I can barely fit in my jacket. <laughs> the keg will set you free. No, I'm just kidding. So anyhow, faith must, as a muscle that either declines or develops. So develop your faith by doing it. Forgive somebody. Let it go. Okay, this is how we do it. We ought to always give thanks to God for you, brothers, as it's right. Because your faith is, if it's not growing, you're not growing. Now, that's, that's deep. You want to write that down? If your faith's not growing, it's not growing. Okay? Your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another. Faith grows in community. Faith must be received, faith must grow, and faith must be activated. You know, you can have all the stuff in, in, until you put it into the pot. You know, what do you add to powdered water? I have no idea. But anyhow, you got, that's a, that's a joke. Okay. Um, but what you got to do, take the ingredients, you got to pour them out, you got to make it happen, right? You take the flour, you take the egg, you take the water, you take the baking soda, you mix it up, you put it in a pan, you put it in the oven. You got to take what's in your shelf. You go to the doctor and you say, doctor, I have, I have indigestion. And you're taking Tums and you're taking uh, Pepsid AC, nothing seems to be working. You go to the doctor, the doctor says, you got an ulcer. You need to take milk and magnesium and I want you to take this. You also have a little bit of gut problem. You need to take this bottle of pills 
uh, for 10 days. So he gives you a piece of paper. You take the paper, right? I don't know what, I can't even read what it says. I go to what? I go to the pharmacist. And I hand it to the pharmacist. I don't really know the pharmacist. The pharmacist gives me a bottle. I take it home. I take one, oh, I'm fine now. No, you got to finish the bottle, right? You got to take the truth, and I don't see any difference. Keep taking the medication. Keep taking what God has told us to do, and you'll see a difference. But you got to believe what it says on the script. The Bible is our script. We take it to the teller. What's the teller? Teller is what you tell yourself and each other. What are you telling each other? Are you telling each other what's on the script? Or uh, I'm fine. Listen, everybody, it will set you free when you know the truth. The truth will set you free if you first believe it and do what it says. So faith must be activated. No temptation, for example, someone says, I can't help myself. I can't help it, I just do it. No, it's what you tell yourself. I told myself this too. No temptation is overtaking you except for what is common to man. That's why it's important to know other people. I got the same problems you have. And God is faithful. We're not allowed you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But, but, with every, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way of escape so that you may, so that you can what? Endure it. So you have control. I can't help it. Yes, you can. You can help it. There's always a, a moment to stop doing something. And so that's why you need to have other people to help you out. It's common to man. You're not the only one going through what you're going through. So this is the truth. I don't, I, and the Bible says you're under no obligation to listen to your sinful nature. I'm under no obligation to do what my body tells me. I must do the truth and everything must align to it. I'll put on braces and I'll exercise my faith until it's strong enough in Jesus' name. Activate faith by surrounding myself with people of faith. That's why it's so important in the Bible. I just want to show you a little bit. Well, I'm going to show you a clip. What happens when you and I take our faith and interlock it with other people. Go ahead and show that clip, please. So as you can see, they interlock their shields together. And this is what you can do. You make a wall for yourself. They can even drive um, chariots across that. Look at how that works. You put it together and you walk together. And what happens is, you can stop that now. Thank you. These things interlock, not this, but the real shield interlocks with each other. And you can put it on the ground and it's got metal. You plant it in here and you put another one on top. And so what happens if you and I will surround each other. And by the way, the Roman armament doesn't have any protection on the back. It's for a reason. They didn't want the soldiers retreating. Who's got your back? I can't always see. I'm on a fly. <laughs> you don't have backup cameras? You know what's behind you, right? I activate faith by surrounding myself with people of faith. It's so important for just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we through many form one body and each member belongs to one another. And so in, in Rome, this is what's called the Trajan's Column, we figured out how to do warfare. It shows you how the shields are together. We had no idea how they did it until we saw some archaeological digs. And this is what they would do. You have to align yourself together. You see how that works, everybody? You've got to be together. You can't do it. This, this is useless really by itself. This is made for cooperation with other soldiers. This is how it works. We interlock. Are you interlocking with anybody? What's going to happen to you? I mean, this is what we have to do. We have to do this together. We go through difficult times. A bad economy. Y2K. <laughs> Who cares? Well, how about, how about that thing that happened four years ago? It begins with a C. I'm not going to mention what it is. I'm not going to mention COVID. I promise you, okay? So there it is, right? We stand together. We help each other out. And also, who's got your back? Uh, that's why we encourage you to get signed up for small groups. Not because of small groups itself. You get to know other believers that got your back. You guys have had my back. You guys have lined up to Sandra and I when she broke her ankle in three places. And you've lined up to when my mother's passing. And you know what? I feel it around me. I don't feel like I'm all alone getting whacked with these arrows. I feel like there's people around me. I feel like this guy's got my back. 
Do you have anyone have your back? It takes time to build. But this only works. Faith only works. This kind of faith that the Apostle Paul is talking about. It only works when you clink together, when you join in together. That's how you make a difference. You see, I, I want to just encourage you here. This is a little bit sobering, but we're going to end with this. Let us, what does us mean? Is that singular or plural? Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promises is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love in good works, right? We want to stir each other up for good works. Now look, let's, okay, this is 23, now we come 24. Here's 25. Okay, this is Hebrews. Not forsaking, look, here it is, okay? We need to stir each other up for good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. It's so easy to stop coming to church. You get in the habit. Ah, I want to go, but I, I, ain't I talked to a lady in the last service. She says, Pastor, today, this morning, I woke up. I'm like, oh, I'll just watch online. The Holy Spirit said, go. She says, I'm so grateful I came today. Because when I came, I sensed God's presence here. I was encouraged, and it's so much better in person with God's people than it is by myself at home. <laughs> Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is in the matter of some, but exhorting each other, and so much more as you see the day approaching. We need to encourage each other what's happening, everybody. We need to encourage each other to stay strong. For, now check this out, everybody. 25, here's 26. A lot of people stop right here. It's easy to get into bad habits. How do you change your bad habit? You start doing the right habit. That's 25. You want to hear 26? No one, no one preaches on 26. I'm going, to go, I'm going there. For if we sin willfully. I'm not saying you slip and you drank too much last night. You get angry. You, you got involved with a sexual sin because you slipped. I'm saying I don't care what anyone says. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to forgive my wife. I'm not going to forgive my father. I don't care what the Bible says. I'm going to do it my way. And if you do that willfully, you're in trouble. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. What does that mean? I don't know. Do you want to find out? It's that important that we stay together. Don't let the enemy get you busy. Don't let the enemy say, oh, you're... No, you have to make it a priority. You make time to eat. You need to have time with the Lord, and you need other men and women in your, body, in your life. There's a reason why us, I emphasize men because men are often by themselves. That's why we gather at 6 a.m. on Wednesdays and, and, and night at 6.30 and Friday at 7. Just in our church alone, other guys are meeting other times as well. It's important that we gather together, that we link in together, not just men but women as well, that we can overcome. I activate faith by surrounding myself with people of faith, and I activate faith by keeping my eyes on Jesus, the author and the completer of our faith. Let's pray. Father. We thank you so much that you're a God of grace and power. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that we would keep our eyes upon you. Lord, we would not look to our left or to our right, but keep our eyes upon you. And Father, I just pray right now for those of us that are tired in this room, we feel like our faith is small. But Father, you said if we have the faith of a mustard seed, we could say, put this mountain and be moved out of its way. We thank you, Father God, that you're the one that provides us that. So, Lord, I pray wherever we are today, Lord, that we would choose to believe your word. We would choose faith over feelings. That we would gather together as believers, linking up our shields together in Jesus' name and keeping our eyes upon you. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in Jesus' name. I want to end with one more thing, and I actually mean it. There was a woman by the name of Carrie Strong, 16 years old, in the 1996 Olympics. She went to do the, she went to mount, you know, jump the horse, the vault over. And when she landed, she, she twisted her ankle. We were going against the Russians. It was necessary for her to land right, if, or else we could not get the gold medal. She was crying, her leg was killing her. And to gather together, they wrapped her with, uh, with something to put her leg back together again uh, a little bit. And then her coach said, I, don't look at your, don't look at your, don't look at your leg. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Don't look at the pain, look at me. And she went over, looked at her coach and she ran and she jumped and she landed and she went like this. And what she could not do, she did because she kept her eye on her coach. 
you and I can do beyond what we could ask or imagine if we would keep our eyes on Jesus. He's the author and he's the finisher of your faith. Keep your eyes on the author. Open your heart and let him write on the pages of your heart and he will write your story. And it will be his story, not yours. Let's pray.